Hey guys, welcome to another video here with Queen City Reef some more. And the topic is a recirculating CO2 scrubber. Some people don't think it's worth it. Some people think that there's no point to this. I feel that some don't think it's worth it because it only raises their pH by 0 0.1, 0 0.2. But with me, if you haven't watched my other videos, it went from a 7.6, sometimes even 7.5, all the way to 7.8. That's what it would uh, stay within without the CO2 media. After I started using CO2, a CO2 scrubber, I could actually get it all the way up to 8.3 and every so often 8.4, but it would always stay between 8.1 to 8.3 and therefore I thought it was perfect because you were talking about more than 0.5 of a difference I knew that I would need it because uh, I did a quick test you know and that was uh, putting my windows down in my house and I left it like that for over 24 hours and that increased my pH between 8.0 and 8.2 is what it would stay for with like that and with a co2 scrubber so the, yeah definitely there's there's a lot of bodies here I'm a father of three children, my wife and my father-in-law. After I feel that the media wears out, and the reason I say feel that the media wears out is because mine doesn't turn purple. Never have I had that BRS media, color changing media, turn purple. Uh, therefore, uh, I gauge it by my pH. You could see the trend of it going down. And I talk about that in my previous CO2 scrubber video. So if you're interested in those details, just you know check out that video. I'll put a link on it at the end of this video and you'll be able to click on it to go check that video out. So I discovered now that after the two weeks that initially would bring down my pH levels to 7.8, I'm still able to now keep my levels. After, the, after those two weeks, I'm able to keep those levels between 7.9 and 8.0. And so I'm thinking maybe I can just leave the media in there longer so that I can try to make it cost effective for me. I did that for quite some time and then I decided that I wanted to do a recirculating uh, CO2 scrubber. The way that a CO2 scrubber works is it pulls that air through the media into the skimmer in order to raise the pH to reduce the CO2 that's going into the skimmer and into the tank. Now what's going on with a recirculating CO2 scrubber is that it pulls in that air that is pulling in that normally it would pull it in from the environment. You have another hose attached there that goes into the skimmer cup and it's pulling in clean air, therefore not pulling in CO2 into the skimmer and that keeps recirculating over and over and over, meaning that uh, the media shouldn't deplete as fast. And how am I going to do a recirculating media scrubber with this, with my current uh, Reef Octopus? Well, that's simple. I'm not sure if you are familiar with Fish of Hex. I'm pretty sure you are. He's got tens of thousands of subscribers, so I'm pretty sure you're familiar with him. And the way that I'm going to do that, the way that I'm going to do that is with his new 3D printout it's as simple as this little 3D printout and what this does is it goes in between your lid and your skimmer cup. The point of it is that it has this where you attach the other end of the hose to where you would want the clean air to recirculate from and on the other side you'll see that there's just a small little gap where air could come through. And the whole point of that was so is so that the bubbles and all that that skim mate that comes through from the top doesn't actually get in there and end up going into the hose. We're gonna see how long my media will last for. How long will my pH stay over 8.0? And uh, hopefully that brings it to at least four weeks is what I'm hoping for, so that I can make it more cost effective. All right, so here is the skimmer cup and. You'll see this side of things where it has this indention and on the other side it's actually a little, I don't even know what you would call it, but the, the part, this part right here, the indention, uh, that's what it's called, goes right on the skimmer cup like that. And then this goes right over it and sits perfectly in there. Now you might be wondering, how will this affect, because I'm actually thinking the same thing too. How would this affect the skimmer being that now 
the inside of that is higher and so we'll find out together really I'm going to now show you the actual media that I use I no longer use the ice cap media it was very good don't get me wrong but it's expensive and I was trying to find a more uh, cost-effective way to actually be able to keep up with my pH and keep it up high so let me go get that and I'll be right back all right so I use this soda lime uh, that I found on eBay uh, it is approximately 36 pounds if you're interested let me know I can leave it in the comments below it was recommended by someone else actually some some other youtuber I can't remember who but I know that an appropriate reefer uses it and I'm sure that others use it that I'm not aware of so far so good I mean all, all it's really doing is making sure to filter the air from co2 so it's not like it's actually going into your tank or anything like that when I made the calculations on this this would end up costing me half as much than what the one on BRS would cost me I want to say that this was expensive to start with though it was about 100 bucks but if you bought the 36 pounds of this and on BRS you would end up paying about what $200 I guess all right guys so we're gonna go ahead and install this I have to actually the media I have media and the co2 scrub already so I'm gonna throw that out I'm gonna fill it with this you've seen that process before it, it's not rocket science so I'm gonna do that and then what I'm gonna do is uh, the next clip that you're going to see is actually going to be of a few weeks from now hoping that I have good news for you that this worked as expected and lasted four weeks or whatever the case may be if it does not I'll definitely keep it posted if it does perfect and so I don't know I'll keep my fingers crossed hoping this is a solution that, that I'm looking for and if it is then uh, then I'll have some good news to share that you can also apply to your uh, tanks and uh, you can thank me later <laughs> all right guys I'll see you in a few seconds from now all right talk to you in a bit all right guys so it's been two weeks since I've actually installed the recirculation kit for the co2 scrubber and when I felt that it was actually doing really good I checked it about three days ago and I noticed that only about maybe a, a fifth of it was used up because this actually turns purple which to me was actually pretty good because normally a, a, the life cycle for this is about two to three weeks and so I was actually very uh, pleasantly surprised by that but today I looked at it again and there is an issue so here is the issue right here I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up there is a lot of moisture that went into this let's see if I can get it close there it is there's a lot of moisture that went into this from the hose and I'll show you how it's connected here. So here is the kit. It raises the, the lid by a bit and then the hose goes all the way here into the skimmer pulls in air from. So it's, it's supposed to be re-pulling the air that comes out from the top of this device. Somehow it's still trapped in moisture. You can see it all the way up here. You can even see it this is where this is where it's actually pulling in air from so it's supposed to be traveling that way you could see all the moisture that built up you can see the moisture up here where the air is supposed to be pulling in and so it's pulling in all that moisture all the way in here and it's pretty much rendered this media useless now because once this media gets wet it to my understanding it is no bueno anymore so I am going to remove this. I am going to, to take all the media out, dump it in the trash, and let this uh, clean it out. There, this is, if there's one negative about this thing is that the only opening for this is from right here. So I'm going to have to remove that, uh, take the media out, probably wash it, rinse it in there, and then let it air dry because my hand will not fit in there for me to try to dry it myself. And there's no other way to actually get into this cylinder here. So I can tell you right now that it is not working as expected. I, I'm going to do a bit more research on this. I'm going to see if maybe I missed this step or I missed something that I should have done to, the, uh, to begin with. For the first week and a half or so, this was working perfectly. I mean, I, there, it was not, just two days ago, this was not, there was, I didn't see the moisture building up. So, and I saw how just a tad bit of it was turning purple. So I was like, perfect, you know. That tells me that this can actually last a few more weeks. I was expecting maybe with what I saw uh, two days ago, I was expecting for this to 
maybe give me triple the amount, maybe six weeks. And if that's the case, that would be perfect. Now, I do want to add that this is not the only means of, of how I'm going to raise my pH because I'm actually thinking, actually, I'm not even thinking, I'm actually going to be installing a calc reactor from, I believe the company name is Avast. Avast. Uh, I actually have it over there already. You'll see that box. I just have been waiting to kind of deplete this media and then that way I can use the, the calc reactor to as it's um, sort of to kind of see how much that will raise the pH before I continue with this media and then see if maybe I'll need maybe a combination of both to, to keep my, uh, my pH high. I could tell you though, I know that people say do not, do not um, bother with chasing numbers and all that with pH and all that. But in my experience, pH at 8.2 or higher has by far increased the polyp extension, the growth, and the coloration of these corals. I mean, I've actually like I've actually messed with it to where I've let it be 7.6 to 7.8, and then I've let it be 8 to 8.4, and there's there's a big difference uh, on the way the corals look. Not just growing fast, but just the coloration. So I'm gonna try to figure this out. Uh, I wanted to just give a quick update here, and. At this point, I'm going to have to restart over and I'll definitely bring y'all back and give y'all some of my feedback once I restart this and figure out if I did something wrong. But I will definitely give it another try and then go from there. Uh, I don't want to make this video longer than it needs to be. Therefore, I'm putting it out without having, you know, without troubleshooting this and then going from there. I can just update y'all on one of those Mega Matrix uh, update videos and talk a bit about it. Uh, so make sure that if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, make sure you comment below. Uh, aside from that, I think I will leave it at that. And uh, you also don't want to miss uh, the calc reactor when I connect that and try to control my alkalinity and calcium via that way and the pH as well. So until then, guys, I will catch you on the next one.